So it's looking like a pretty big Warhammer release week. We've got a big new mechanic and box set with pricing confirmed and a rather unusual discount offering, bundling two of Games Workshop's most expensive night kits in one box. Let's talk about what's coming to pre-order next weekend. Hello and welcome back to Warspets Tactics, where today we're talking about Games Workshop's news and releases. Today sees the announcement of a big box that we know has been coming for really quite a long time, Plastic Mechanicum and Fun Automata for the Horus Heresy, and as mentioned, there's a rather unusual discount nightly kit on offer, where you can basically get two of Games Workshop's biggest and most expensive plastic knights bundled together in the same box and save a bit of money. There's a few other bits as well, including Legion's Imperialis and a Votan-centric White Dwarf. First up, let's focus on that Mechanicum box set though. This is the latest in the line of plastic ranges that have been launching for the Horus Heresy, translating a massive amount of their resin Forge World back catalogue to plastic, though keeping the miniatures at least fairly similar for the most part. The launch box for the Heresy Era Abmec will be going for pre-order on Saturday the 3rd of August, so full release in stores on the 17th of August. In the Battle Force box set, you get some fun automata to Cassavet's Battle Automata as the big boys, the robot appearings, but actually sort of cyborg troops, Thalax ones, borne aloft on the jetpacks, a whole bunch of ad secularist tech thralls, with some nice sinister programmed humans to have stomping into battle and soak up the enemy's firepower, no doubt, and a great big transport for the Mechanicum in the Triarus armored conveyor. It looks like the pricing for this box set is 210 US dollars, so that would translate to 125 pounds or 160 euros. So a little bit cheaper than the equivalent Solar Auxilia box set that came out earlier in the year, with the whole plastic launch for that range. It seems like it's maybe not too bad news that this one's come out a little bit cheaper than the Solar Auxilia, given that that one was pre-price rise and this one is after the price rise. I feel like for that one maybe you got a little bit more stuff, but the differences weren't enormous I thought. I might do a bit more of an in-depth value breakdown later in the week if I get a chance to. But in general, that price seems kind of in line with what I would have expected from Games Workshop. They tend to aim Battle Forces to be somewhere around a 30-40% to 40 discount on the miniatures contained within, and that does look like it's consistent with this at first glance. Talking of discounts, if you were looking to pick up a copy of the box set, I do have a bunch of channel affiliate discount retailers linked down in the video description. They should be stocking the box set in good numbers, and discounts range from 15% for Element in the UK and Wargame Portal in the USA, 10% for Fenris in Canada, and 21% for Gap Games in Australia. These are the pre-order times that the box sets should be going live. It'll be midnight over in North America, either Central Time for Wargame Portal, or Eastern Time for Fenris Workshop, and then 10am for Element Games in the UK, and midday Australian Eastern Time for Gap Games. As ever with Games Workshop big boxes, it's usually worth being there promptly. If you do want to guarantee that you get your hands on a limited release Battle Force box set, so my guess is for this one, based on the Solar Auxilia, they probably won't be selling out instantly like some of the 40k ones do. At least in the UK, it's still fairly easy to find the Solar Auxilia one right now. So I feel like this one will probably be around for a little while to come at least. In any case, a big thanks to any support in the channel by buying things through those affiliate links when you pick stuff up. It does help out. Returning for a second quick look at the box set miniatures, here are just a few more close-up pictures of the miniatures from the set. These are the Cyborg Thalax with their jump jets and their heavy firepower. Options to arm them with Melter and Plasma, as well as their standard war gear. A few choices for head swaps as well. The Tech Thrills march into battle with their laser weapons and bayonets. Very much compelled to do the ominous eyes bidding. It sort of looked like Doctor Who Cyberman zombies or something like that. Here's a closer look at the Triarus Armoured Conveyor. Quite a fun transport I think. I like the curved design of the hull and the oddly angular tracks. Always interesting to see what sort of weirdness the ad have come up with. And here are those Castellax Automata with the option for saw blades and claws. They've got different top mounted firepower options that you can mount on the top of them as well as you can see. It's a shame that these sort of things aren't getting any 40k rules anytime soon. I feel like they'd fit in fairly well and aren't really so very different in styling from the Castellan robots. Then the way that this one should work is that the entire Mechanicum range will likely be released in a second wave. Everything from the big box, plus at least these two kits as well. They previously revealed the big Thanator Siege Automata with a great big Grav Bombard thing. And I thought Archmageos Prime as well. I feel like he could be used pretty readily as a standing tech priest for Warhammer 40k. It's perhaps a bit weird that he wasn't included in the big box though. I sort of feel like it's kind of lacking a central leader to lead the set. Most sets do tend to come with at least something like that. 
As it goes, I feel like the box set's maybe going to be kind of niche appeal to 40k collectors. Obviously really quite a big thing for people wanting to play Mechanicum in Horus Heresy. Otherwise the other units maybe don't gel enormously well onto current Admec things in 40k. In terms of scale of the release, it looks like it's pretty much the same sort of popularity as the Necromunda High Secundus box set. Definitely has its fans in one corner of the hobby. I'll be interested to hear what you think though. Would you be tempted to pick this up or not? Otherwise, the other major release of the week is a discounted Knights bundle. This one's been named the Knights Battle Group, Castigator and Acheron. Maybe kind of optimistic calling it a battle group as it's basically just two big Imperial or Chaos Knights and you can fill them both in the Horus Heresy and in contemporary Warhammer 40k as well with the Imperial Armour rules. I guess the box set's probably going to be a limited run as the quarters of battle group alongside the other battle groups that were sold and then got sold out. Looks like it does give you a fairly reasonable saving compared with buying them separately, but seems unlikely it to be a core part of the heresy range. It looks like the pricing on this is $310, so that would be roughly £190 or €245, Euros, a saving of roughly 26% versus buying them separately. The Castigator and the Acheron are the two Serastus Knights that they released last year following the Lancer. The Acheron's the one with the great big flamethrower and the chain fist. The Castigator gets that fairly terrifying dual bolt cannon and its warblade. It was quite cool to see them make the jump into plastic from 412 resin. They did bring them down in cost quite a lot, even if they do remain, I think, the single most expensive Warhammer 40k plastic model out there. $210 or £125. That 26% saving essentially translates to buy one night and get the next half price, as it appears that these will be available to discount retailers as well, so I'm sure that some of them will order them in, so you might be able to stack the 10-20% to sort of savings on top of that. As they go, both of these are pretty fun and recent kits. In game in 40k, the Acheron gets its flame cannon, which is kind of sad that it can't overwatch anymore. A bit disappointingly weak in game for the points it costs at the moment, but the Castigator I'd say is really quite usable both for Imperials and Chaos. The Bolt Cannon is just a really general purpose gun with its twin linked wound rerolls. Should be able to stack some damage on most things, though it will be best against Elite Infantry. And the Sarastas chassis in general is pretty nice, a little bit tougher and faster moving. I can't help but think though with this sort of release that hasn't really had any hype built up to it or anything like that, does kind of feel like it might be a move to try and get some unsold stock of knights moving. These guys were released last year and came a fair bit after the Lancer, so I can't help but think that if they produced equal amounts of them, a lot more people might have picked up the Lancer and then had that to save the appetite for tall knights for the time being, so maybe they might be left over with a few too many of these. Still though, could be kind of interesting for some people. As I said, it is kind of interesting to get knights at a discount full stop. If you were planning to get one of these at some point, then now might not be the worst time. Even if you were just to resell the second one, you'd probably come out ahead. Otherwise, for the week's releases, it looks like it's Imperialis and the Devastation of Talon. All very appropriate to be having some big tank releases for. And for this one, they've got the Legion Shadow Swords, some mini Lehman Rust Demolishers and Executioners, and the Sakaran Arcus and Punisher Squadrons. Could be a few things of interest for people looking to command some tank clashes at the epic scale game that Games Workshop offer. Finally, I thought it was interesting that the White Dwarf for this month is going to be a Leagues of Votan themed one, delving into a backstory of their faction it looks like. I'm not sure how much they'd go into miniatures or rules related things at all, but maybe it could be an interesting chance for them to share more lore if they wanted to. The Leagues of Votan haven't been enormously well explored by their codex so far. Would you be tempted by the Mechanic and Battle Group or some discount knights? Let me know your thoughts on the box sets if you were eyeing them up as to whether or not they pass or fail the price test. As mentioned, if you were looking to pick them up and save some money, feel free to check out the links down in the video description when they go for pre-order on Friday to Saturday. Feel free to subscribe to All Specs Tactics if you'd like to see more like this. I'll certainly try and keep up with Games Workshop's news and releases. I do tend to post new videos most days. And finally, if you'd like to help support the channel and keep these videos coming, I would just like to mention that I do have a Patreon page as well, and that's linked down in the video description. Channel patrons do get a fair few advantages, seeing certain videos early, regular votes to see what sort of things come next on the channel, and automatic entry into the regular prize giveaways with a chance to win some big model kits each month. If any of that sounds good to you, or you'd just like to help support, the link is down in the video description. In any case, a massive thank you for listening. And I'll hope to see you guys next time.